Hello and welcome to Creating Canon with your hosts, AJ Hamilton and Nice Coin Purse. <laughs> oh no. Mm-hmm. That's I am disturbed by what you have just called me. Yeah, don't feel like that's a threat. Oof. Um, th- Oof. It might be, might be. Oof, oof. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my goodness. Uh, how you doing, Nick? Wh- oh, is that my name? Because I thought my name at this point was oh. just Nice. Nice Coin Purse. And Nicholas C. Pepper. Yeah, I'm doing okay, AJ. Uh, yeah? You know, this is our... um. This is our first quarantined episode of Creating yeah. Canon, so gosh, it's it's been an interesting time. Um, <laughs> I th- We're living in an interesting world. I know. I threw my back out oh. about a week and a half ago. Yeah. So what's weird is I've been convalescing while mm-hmm. the world has gone to shit. So <laughs> I... I mean, like, obviously I'm reading the news because I have a lot of time to read the news. But, like, mostly I was just laying on my back being like, I can't move. I can't move. So even if I was... It's a nice distraction. Well, yeah. Even if I was allowed to go someplace, I couldn't. Sure. So while other people are, like, chewing at walls, I'm like, I sat for an hour and a half today without trying. When? Aw, neat. Hey, what do you miss most about going outside, huh, Nick? Um, At this exact moment? Yeah. Nothing. Oh, I, uh, I am built. Okay. I am built for this. Hell yeah. This is, this is my bag. I mean, in, (laughs) in the last seven days, I've watched 20 movies. Well, there you go. So, and that's like with a bad back where I can't like sit and watch them and (laughs) working. Okay. So like, sure. That's pretty much your life anyway. Yeah. Yes. And now I just have an excuse when people are like, do you want to do something? I'm like, hell no. I no be responsible i can't do anything you know the thing that i miss most actually is i was gonna ask you aj what do you miss most oh thank you for asking thank you for asking nick i I Uh, didn't realize we were done with me (laughs) i didn't realize we're moving on to you already oh well apparently we are oh Uh, i'm running this damn thing yeah what's up what do you miss about going outside movie theaters actually (sighs) you know what yeah i agree with you yeah, I mean, even if it's the most recent schlock that's put out by the studios, or going with you and some of our previous guests to the New Beverly and watching an old movie, <sighs> I mean, that's that's that, a shame. That's actually one of the things where, like, and I mean, look, we are both very lucky in that so far, yeah. knock on wood, we're healthy and people we know are healthy. Yeah. Um. And at this exact moment, the thing that saddens me is that this month at the New Beverly, the last Friday of the month, we were going to mm-hmm. see a triple feature that yeah. was headlined by John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars and Ugh. Master of the Flying Guillotine. And again, Damn it. And again yep. I want to mm-hmm. point out that like we are very lucky, and right now yeah. that's totally like... First it's a problems. sacrifice yeah it's it's a it's an easy sacrifice yes. to make we're we're all just in our own uh situations so we we regret what we regret but yes, yes absolutely i i do thank uh my lucky stars yeah that i am uh that i'm healthy and thus able and, and thus far and able to stay inside yeah. privileged yes. to be able to you know so and i assume next week I might have a different um, answer to what do I miss most about outside. Um, well, of course, of course. Because that, honestly, you've been dealing point, with the too, back thing. <laughs> yeah, I was to say, honestly, reality is the thing I miss most is walking and sitting. But you know, and you're just getting back to that. So yeah, so I'm I'm about a week and a half behind everybody. Yeah, um, but don't worry, I'm an overachiever. I'll catch up. I real know fast. you you got this, buddy. Yeah, don't worry. I, I know that you didn't tune in to to hear us gripe about the uh, the effects that this uh, crazy pandemic is having on everybody, but uh, you know what you did tune in to hear is creating canon. Yes, gosh darn it. Yeah, not creating Corona. <laughs> CC. CC. Um, either way, creating. Uh, I should have went with creating COVID. That makes sense in uh, scanning, you know, yeah. uh, with the beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fine. But uh, Nick, what did we watch this week? Oh, AJ, what this movie week, was it? This week we went back to 1993. You know, the year mm. of Jurassic Park, mm-hmm, the year mm-hmm. of the Fugitive, Schindler's Lovely. List, 
quality. Groundhog Day. Oh, man. One of my favorites. Mrs. Doubtfire. Okay. What's Eating Gilbert Grape. The Nightmare mm. Before Christmas. Sleepless in Seattle. Hocus Pocus. Wow. The Sandlot. Demolition Man. Rudy. True Romance. In the Name of the Father. Wow. Cliffhanger. In, in good company, man. Philadelphia. Wow. Cool Whoa. Runnings. <laughs> and we watched of all the One movies. One of those? No, no. We did not. We did not. We watched Prison Heat. Prison Heat? Yes. Why did we do that? Well, because it's the only canon film off that list of all those movies I just read. And Damn. The, the reason I wanted to read all of those lists, like all of those titles, <laughs> yeah. is because, and I'm kind of jumping ahead for half a second, but I just got to okay. say, like, there was a point where as I was watching the movie, I went, wait, this was made in 1993, yeah. not 1974. Apparently not. Like, did it feel like a movie from a different era to you? I mean, obviously Abs- it is from a different era, but you know what I mean. No, but it definitely felt like a uh, troublesome movie, dealing with a lot of weird things. But even, like, outfits that characters were wearing, and, like, yeah. the hair, it was so I mean, ridiculously it, 80s. I, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I still think that 1993, it was a time that was evolving, Sure, but none of these Past women the 90, look like the eighties, like Laura Dern in Jurassic <laughs> yes. Park, or like right. Meg Ryan. Well, they could also Seattle. afford things. They they could afford uh, outfits and stuff like that. I'm just um, talking we, about hairstyles, dude. This yeah. hair was like the kid on the playground who was beaten up. It was so teased. Well, what you know? What I think actually, and this this is only a theory, but I feel like what happened is since this is shot in Israel mm-hmm. I think that American trends and things like that get uh, passed over slightly slower to oh, other that's countries an interesting idea. and I feel like maybe the 80s was just hitting them or <laughs> or, or or was in the middle of the 80s a little bit you know what I mean but, um, I don't know I mean this is directed by Joel Silberg who yeah. is I believe American. Okay. Um, Joe Silberg directed Rappin. He directed Breakin. He directed Lombada. Oh, wow. And, like, this felt older than Rappin. <laughs> Damn. And Rappin was a full, well, not a full decade, but, like, what? Almost. Eight years before this movie? Right. Oh, my gosh. Well, I guess we should actually get into the plot, right? I suppose so. So, Prison <clears throat> Heat. What's this prison all about? Prison Heat. <clears throat> Have you seen Midnight Express and thought... This would be so hot with boobs. Mm. Well, Yoram Globus sure did. So sit back, eat some Turkish delight, and watch Prison Heat, the hottest prison movie around. <laughs> All of that was tongue firmly in cheek. <laughs> I loved it. I think it's pretty accurate. Have you ever seen Midnight Express, the movie about the guy who is in a Turkish prison? Because mm-hmm. he was trying to smuggle weed across the border. I mean, I mean, it's it's the way a lot of uh, a lot of movies sadly start. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just pretty common. Do you remember that one movie uh, back in what is it ninety nine late late nineties uh, called Broke Down Palace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are you sure it's not Broken Down Palace? It might be. No, no, I think it's Broke Down. I yeah, mean, just go with Broke Down Palace. Yeah, yeah, Kate Dick, uh, uh, Kate, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, let me try this again. Yeah, yeah, it's the one that, uh, starred Lou Diamond Phillips and Bill Pullman. That's exactly right. As, That's... But they're not the girls. Claire, Claire no. Danes and Kate Beckinsale are the girls. Oh, I thought, yeah, I thought it was a sequel <laughs> to Bats. Um... Oh, Bats. <laughs> wow, are we just avoiding talking about this movie? All right, let's go for it. Dude, this, this movie was rough to watch, and I didn't... I didn't expect it to be like we've watched a movie before called uh, The Naked Cage, which as campy and silly as it was, I actually appreciated. Yeah, well, I think I think the problem was, I mean, Naked Cage was very much a women, a straight women in prison film or gay it's women, like women in, Amer- in prison. Well, I meant women in an American prison. This movie right. does the extra level of, like, Turkish bad thing. Um, yeah, and uh, I, sailing I, into sex slavery and stuff like that. Yeah. The yeah, ticking clock. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. And, you know, honestly, look, my first note is, 
I actually, my literally my first note is from the very first shot. I went, uh-oh, yeah. I feel unsafe. <laughs> <laughs> I feel unsafe in this movie. I don't feel like I'm in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing. Nope. Um, no, the gets... tone immediately was wrong. Yes. And then it gets really yep. weird in that mm-hmm. it does that long pan shot of like our four main girls dancing. And we have... They weren't even dancing, were they? They were sitting in the cafe. Oh, they got up that... and danced. Oh, I suppose they were. Because yeah. here's because here's the important part okay. that I was going to get at. Like, I, I had noticed this and I was like, this is really uncomfortable. Is Colleen, who was played by Rebecca Chambers, right. um, who's sort of the lead of our group. Mm-hmm. is up and dancing yep and then one of the other members gets up and dances and all we get are shots of her butt and shots oh, of yeah. her breasts in her shirt but mm-hmm. we never actually get a shot of her face <laughs> of course not why would you want to identify down. with the main character well and that's and exactly and well and that turned out to be bonnie so mm-hmm. we've got colleen who's our lead and we've got bonnie who's our like and I hate to use this term, but, like, the quote-unquote sexy girl. Right. And She's played what... by Lori Jo Hendricks. Yes, who was mostly doing, um, like, softcore porn. Right, yes. And then they have that first conversation. Which, which is... felt like something rejected from Sex in the City. Mixed with the room. It's like if John... yeah. oh, Tommy God. Wiseau. It's like if Tommy Wiseau wrote Sex in the City, because it was so exposition-heavy. Mm-hmm. But basically, well, all of this movie was. Wow. Well, yeah, that's true. But basically, what happens is these four women are college students who are in Greece, and they decide that they want to go to Turkey for an adventure. Woo! And I don't know what's. This was one of the big problems they had. Is like I don't know what was in Turkey. Like, I, like why Turkey? Why not? Stay I guess in it was. I guess it was just over the border. It was, you know, I've I've been on vacations to Europe, oh, and I've I'm thought so fancy. I've been to vacations to Europe. You have too. I know. I wasn't like I. I you I, were mocking me. Yes, you no, were mocking me. I, no, I I felt like that was your mocking voice. Oh uh, no, that wasn't my mocking voice. No, this was your mocking voice. Um, I felt like when I was near a border, uh. I was like. You know what? Let's just go over the border. We were in the south of Germany, and we were like, "Let's go to Austria just for a day, just to just to say that we went to Austria and then come back." And we did that, and um, it was it was fine, but it it's kind of a cheat. You know, but it's kind of it's totally. kind of like ah, I I, I, I mean, can I, check off that that country. I was Done. in the Amsterdam airport for ten hours, but I don't consider oh. that being in Amsterdam. No, me too. The thing though that I want to say though is like fucking layovers. If if they had said in any way, shape, or form, let's just go to say that we were going to Turkey. Sure, that'd be one thing. But they were like, let's extend our trip and go to Turkey because those Turkish boys are hot. Yeah, or maybe they are. We don't know. Like, <laughs> is there a museum? Is there anything there? That's, yeah, no, that's the you're thing. absolutely like, right. Like, if they were like, you know, it would be great to see the site of I don't know the Iliad. Sure. Go to Troy or whatever. Or like, we want to go to Turkey because so-and-so in mm-hmm. our group is Turkish. Or right, even if yeah. it was like, let's just cross the border so we could like cross a country off our list. Mm-hmm. They would get it. But this movie, the way it was presented was like, yeah, let's go there because it's great to party in. <laughs> and like, you know, if you're in Greece, yeah, in the islands where it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful, yeah. I don't know why you go. There's no, absolutely no reason. It looked like they were having such fun, and I don't know what the the draw then, would have been. <laughs> Good yes. lord! I mean, other than plot points, and that's what this movie felt sure. like was just a bunch of plot points. So I was trying to look up some statistics for uh, kidnapping. Whoa, whoa, and, whoa, whoa! Uh, spoiler alert. Sorry uh, for for this uh, this movie, but uh, I couldn't find the kidnapping statistics for that period of time. But I did find an interesting thing on Nation Master. It, it, it lists all these different statistics for assaults and different murders, uh-huh. and everything. And there was one right above worried about being mugged or robbed. It was worries about being insulted. It ranks 33rd. <laughs> That's a weird thing to, to keep track of. But... Um, I guess that's the 33rd <laughs> most insulting country in the world. It's so uh, watch out. Yeah. 
Watch out for your feelings. Well, I mean, I do have to say that the Greeks yeah. and the Turks don't get along very well. Ah. The Armenians and the Turks don't get along very well. Mm-hmm. And the uh, Israelis and the Turks don't get along very well. So, Well, shit. You know. And I'm not trying to make this uh, political in any way. No, no, no. But, we, know, in fact, we should jump off of this history. topic completely. Yeah, let's get back to uh, the movie. When, yeah, okay. When the four women are driving from yeah. Greece to Turkey... And one of them goes, Michelle, play something on your guitar. And the other one goes, yeah, play something funky. And then she starts playing, oh, Susanna, oh, won't you cry, cry for, for me? me? I come from Alabama, Alabama with, with, banjo. with the banjo on my knee. By the way, and it was that perfect blo- four-part the, harmony at that point. The blocking of the guitar to make sure that you didn't know that she couldn't play a guitar was brilliant. Also, the fact that play something funky and they came play up with something funky. oh Susanna," which is no the funkiest song apparently in public domain and after seeing this movie and no spoilers until we get to it but i hate this song more <laughs> now so frustrated with this fucking song well yeah that's a whole other thing yeah but, at this point i'm like why do i care about them because i i don't know why not at um, all. And almost immediately they're kidnapped by, uh, they're set up by the governments, the, the Turkish border guards yeah. mm-hmm. who plant cocaine in their car. So obviously. Because My God. the four women are pretty and mm-hmm. they want to sell them into sex slaves. Sex slavery. Sex yeah. Slavery. This is at this point is when I first noticed, like just after they've been kidnapped, Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, technically they're not kidnapped. What they are is arrested falsely. Right. And yeah. their families don't know anything about where they bum, are. Bum, but bum. this is Good where, way. I know, right? This is where it dawned on me why it sounded so familiar, because it's a, it's a ripoff of an Italian synth score, like something like Fabio Frizi would do. Mm, um, but it's not. It's not. Uh, the music is by Moshi Musa Nahamis. And mm. I'm sure I butchered that. And I apologize, yeah. Musa. Moshe. Musa. Not Myers. Okay. Um, also, did we mention that this was shot in Israel? Yeah, and I think that's kind of important to know. I think you mentioned mm-hmm. that with the uh, style thing. That's true. Early that's on. true. But I do think that's important to know because it does have that, like, canon movie tales quality to it. Very, very much. <laughs> Um, oh, God. At this point, the four women are lined up, and there is a guard whose name is uh, uh, Saladin. Saladin, played by Yuri Gavriel. And I thought that I recognized him. He's and I was been like, in a couple of things. He has. He was the blind prisoner in The Dark Knight Rises. Yes. And that's where, that's where I recognized yes, him. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly who he is. Um, but in this movie, they've got him doing this weird, like, thing where he is, like, the guard who we come to find out later is the person selling everybody into this sex slavery ring. He's um, kind of the warden of the whole thing. Yeah, and he's the warden, which... Because there's always a warden character. Because there's always a warden character. But at this point, this is when it starts getting really weird, because the four women are in prison for the first time and they're told to strip naked yeah and he's like get naked and they're like no and he's like strip do it do it and he gets a knife out and he starts like cutting the clothes off one of the women bonnie who is bonnie and the reason i bring this up is it felt really weird in that what we are watching is horrific it's gross it's unpleasant yet it is shot so erotically and, yeah, and and this is a thing that happens numerous times, and I really want to hit this point home because, like, mm-hmm. that's one of the things about this is it's like it, it's really uncomfortable. I hated watching this because I absolutely agree the the shooting of it was to suggest eroticism. It was it was supposed to be a uh, a sexy smoldering movie, yes. and yet every single situation was the most uncomfortable. That you could possibly have. Well, all the nudity in the movie was either Mm -hmm. showering, which was very little of the nudity, Mm -hmm. or some form of sexual assault. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I think this is really telling because one of the taglines is young 
sexy behind bars. They'll do anything to get out. And it's like, oh, gross. That is not this movie. Another tagline is no trial, no trace, no tomorrow, which I'm down with that tagline. Slightly better, but it sounds way too epic for this movie. That is true. But at least with that one, it's not like young, sexy boobies. Right. Yeah. Where you're like, ah, I don't like it. Stop it. it. Don't do that. At this point, we meet a woman named Mary who immediately becomes their like best friend. Yeah. Because she's in a bunk near them. Yes. So that works. Um, Which led to one of my favorite lines where they're all talking and Mary just sort of stops what she's doing. And she's like, ah. (laughs) I have things to do. And I was like, what? <laughs> what things? You're in prison. You have responsibilities? You're you're in prison. What do you have to do? I got to get going. Well, they, they do a lot of different things in this fucking movie. I mean, when they enter one of the cells, one of the people, one of the ladies is doing heroin in yes, the corner. when they so first they walk are, in. Yeah. And actually, right when mary gives that line she's obviously dying of uh, mary is obviously dying of tuberculosis by the way because we've already seen her coughing Mm -hmm. uh but this is also a time where we're introduced to pockies the woman who is labeled as the big boss the little boss yes who can sort of get you anything she's sort of like the red red. (laughs) yes but 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 red is lovable and kind right this woman is cutthroat and evil yeah they said uh uh, there was a whole thing she she would sell her own mother if she could yeah this was a very complicated movie for not a lot happening in it well and i and i want to get to this because uh, there is a lot there is so there's like an hour and a half well the movie's only 90 minutes long yeah i feel like there's 65 minutes of like setup and there is just yeah. nothing but setup so everything can sort of flip in the yeah. last 25 minutes and things can start paying off but in that 65 minutes of setup they had to create a lot of drama that at the mm-hmm. end of the day has no real anything behind it um one thing i do want to yeah. mention is there's a character named helena who who i called uh heart tattoo yeah played by tony naples who mm-hmm. was in chopping mall death stalker 2 sorority house massacre 2 munchy and munchy strikes back oh hell yeah yeah so she's done some fun stuff mm-hmm. um but she for whatever reason immediately looks at bonnie and is like i want bonnie I'm the bad one. And she goes to get Bonnie and, like, make her her prison house girlfriend. Ugh. Um, to which Colleen steps up and, like, smacks Helena around. Yeah, they have a great uh, dining room fight. Yes. Oh, my God. The fights in this movie are terrible. <laughs> um, they are. You could you could not telegraph some of those punches better. Yeah. Time to duck. Exactly. But what I thought was really great is Helena has a knife in that scene. And in the fight... <laughs> the uh, knife is my favorite part of this fucking movie. Well, this is actually one of the things that I actually really enjoyed about the movie. I gotta be honest. It's like, there's, okay. that, fight in this, there's that fight and Helena has a knife. Yeah. And um, Saladin comes in to break up the fight. And it's yeah. clear that Saladin and Helena have this thing against each other. So Helena quickly, like, drops the knife. Of course. And one of the main four, character named Audrey, whose name I don't think we hear once in the movie. I think we we heard it about three quarters through. Okay. I, w- I was very much looking out for the, for the names for the names because I, I, I always tried to, like, identify the people as right. human beings rather than, oh, this one's wearing orange. Yeah. So just to kind of go over our four, we have yes. Colleen, who's the leader. We have Bonnie, who is the young naive and pretty one yep we have michelle who is the singer i guess and she's kind of unimportant to the plot she's very they could have been a trio honestly uh, well and actually i think audrey is kind of unimportant to the plot as well other than she grabs yeah. the knife in this scene which i thought it's was true. a great moment <laughs> yeah i did too um, and she slides it up her shirt yes so now they've got like a weapon in the upper hand but Thank here's goodness. where things this is one of the things where at this point, like every single person that these four get in contact with, they're like, what the fuck is your problem? What the <laughs> fuck are you looking at me? I'm an American. I get to do what I want. And like, all they do is create enemies everywhere yeah. they go. Like they are mm-hmm. not playing anything smart. No, not at all. And they're playing things much lower stakes than I imagine it would feel 
if you were in a foreign prison with no connections to the outside. Yeah. They are the the lightness that especially Colleen plays things with is uh frustrating at best. Some of that is writing and some no. of that is acting. <laughs> uh, fair, fair. At this point too I started wondering like what kind of prison is this because it seems like They are free to roam wherever they want to roam. They are not in, like, a prison uniform. They are in whatever street clothes they had. They were allowed to take their guitar in. They were allowed to to have a lot of stuff. Yeah. Where did they hide the money that they had? Was Was that in a pill box or something like that? Tampon box. Okay. Which is, I'm assuming, one of those things where that's... Because Colleen had hid her money in there. And I'm assuming that was where she's had her money the whole trip because... If you're Makes a sense. thief coming in to steal stuff, mm-hmm. you're not going to go through the tampon box. Oh, sure, of course. Which is, yeah. which is actually another really smart it's actually move not, by the characters. It's actually not, not bad, yeah. So at this point in the washroom, like I know we're kind of jumping all over the place and we're not really talking much about the plot, but because there is not much plot. No, no. Right? It's it's, just... it's them trying to get out of this prison. Well, the first and half... And trying certain things. Yeah, well, it seems like the first half an hour is simply just... The four women in every situation being like, we're American and you have to let us talk to a lawyer. And then the next (laughs) half an hour is just a series of either sexual assaults. I was going to say Helena or Saladin trying to rape Bonnie. And that's what it comes down to, to the point where like all of a sudden out of nowhere, Helena grabs Bonnie, throws her to the ground. And then I thought this was really weird. But basically what Helena does Mm -hmm. is rips Bonnie's shirt open and then rips her pants open and digitally penetrates her? Yeah, she does. And it's gross. It is really gross. But at this point, Colleen comes in and saves Bonnie from Helena. Yep. And starts a fight. Saladin comes in and forces Colleen to go into solitary confinement. Right. By by the way, solitary is a misnomer. (laughs) Yes, I was actually going to point that out. Also, first first time they say it, I thought he said send her to the cemetery, and I was oh, like, "What? No, oh, no. oh that would god, have been more interesting! That would have been so much more interesting if there was something d- titled that." Yeah. But there is another person in her solitary cell, so that it's bullshit killed me. And what the, other the fuck? thing about that person in that solitary cell was a she was a woman named Susan Allen. Susan Allen, <laughs> um, which was, oh, she was I almost forgot her name. Ironically, I but, did uh, you really come in later? Oh no! Yeah, yeah well, because this woman just goes uh, basically out of nowhere. Is like, here, eat this bread, you'll be fine. Oh, and don't worry about the uh, worms in it. It's good protein. Which, I actually thought that was a good line. Yeah, it was great. It was probably one of the best. It and was... I feel like she probably improved it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the woman, uh, Susan Allen, yes. is just like. I've been here for a year, and what happens is they break you down and they sell you into sex slavery, so you need to get out. If you die trying to leave, that's better than staying here. Here is a branding from Saladin, so mm-hmm. like, so you know people know he's one of Saladin's women. I've been out there, and what happens is you're out there for six months, and then they murder you or you die of disease. I'm or th- they par- apparently send you back to jail. Well, this is the point that I was going to get at. Was like, yeah. She has this whole thing. She's like, I'm 30, and I look 60. I'm 30. And I look, yeah. Um... And then, at that point, she's like, and anyways, so that's what your fate is. And that's when I was like, wait a second. You said that there's a timeline of six months. They guarantee right. kill you after six months. Yeah. Yet, yet you've been alive for a year and you're back here. And I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that, like, she's lived a solid good life. But the point that I am trying to make is, <laughs> it's very clear at this point that the only reason she is there is as a plot device. Yeah, it's it's exposition put into a uh, an incorrect character. Yes. Because if you had it, evidence of that, doesn't make sense that she would be thrown back in jail unless she did uh, something else on uh if she had escaped, I don't know. Well, you that know. That doesn't make s- like none of that wouldn't her would story just kill is her. her story is incongruous. Yeah, it with, doesn't with make the any situation. sense. It would yeah. have been better if like one of the other characters, like um, mm-hmm. Helena, has yeah. like a lackey, and if sure. the lackey was like, "Listen, this is what happens to women here," yeah, and I and I've heard stories, and here are the rumors, sure, or any other prisoner does that, like I, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it, but like to have this character, because basically what happens is Colleen goes in there to solitary, yep. 
hears the story <laughs> and then gets out of solitary within like the same a- well actually what happens is there's a reason why she gets out because Celadine offers a deal if Bonnie has sex with him he will let Colleen out of jail yeah. out of solitary and and Bonnie doesn't go for it but this no. is this is the first instance of Saladin raping Bonnie where um and this scene was super uncomfortable uh and the scene afterwards in the shower it, in the shower was so gross because it was shot so sexually yes. and and so like she's on display and honestly I got to give her, give Lori Jo Hendricks credit because I think she was probably one of the best actresses in this movie. She does some good um, work because she tried. She yes. was actually letting the I guess not a lot of them had much to have affect them within the story other, other than, than the to fact be that they snotty. were Right. Um, but she was the one who was actually gripping onto the story of her character and showing some emotion of being distraught and being yeah. devastated by the situation. Uh, but it was still shot in such a fucking gross, like, full on, like, this This is the time, fellas. Yes. She's on display for you. And she's on display. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she just starts vomiting because, yeah. like... That's the thing. Again, it's such a weird thing. At this point, they don't even go after Saladin for whatever reason. No. Their first idea is that they need to get Helena off their back. Right. So Colleen pulls this ruse with that she is going to <laughs> convince Helena that she wants her and that they're going to shower at midnight and, and have oh, sexy yeah. times. Where what ends up happening is Colleen hides the knife in her Hides the knife hair. in her hair. It's like a bob cut. I have so much to say about the ni- the hair knife because <laughs> they spend a lot of time trying to convince the audience that this is a possibility. And then when she goes into the shower, there is not a single effort made to not have Helena's hands or face or anything up against the back of her head because you would know if there was a fucking knife in the back of someone's hair like yeah hiding there to be pulled out later it's it's so fucking stupid well what else is stupid is out of nowhere yeah in this scene she pulls the knife on helena puts it to Mm -hmm. her throat and is like you leave my fucking friends alone or i'll kill you yeah basically which to me, is dumb because all she did was threaten at this a point. A person who clearly has some power in the fucking prison. prison. Right. So, like, what you're doing is you're furthering an enemy. Yeah. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't have fought back, but she should have just fucking killed her. Because yeah, it no doesn't half help. fucking measures. And then, to make it even more gross and embarrassing, uh, or, like, weird, yeah. what she decides to do is grab a bar of soap... And says, yeah. eat this soap like a baby chocolate baby. bar. Yeah. Also, Colleen says something right before that. While she's holding the knife to Helena's neck, she says, you're going to answer some questions. And you nod if you say yes, and you shake your head if you say no. If you say no, you're going to slit your own throat. Then she proceeds to not ask her any Pertinent questions. Well, the questions she asked were, are you going to leave Bonnie alone? Yes. Are you going to leave my friends alone? Yes. It's not like a question of like, why are we here? What is the slavery thing? Yeah. Do you know? Like, that's where I thought that was going. Yeah. I I wanted it to be more fucking in depth. Yes. Um, But at at the end of that fucking scene, it was so maddening because this is what I'm talking about with uh, Rebecca Chambers' performance as Colleen is as she is leaving her, as she is watching Helena throw up the soap and, like, be hunched over in the shower room, yeah, defeated, is she is leaving the room sort of half giggling and smiling as if her and her friends just pulled a prank on her little sister at a sleepover. Right. Like, it's got that weight to it for her well and the reality is they just pulled a prank on you know essentially carrie right yeah like right someone who has the power to be carrie in a few scenes mm-hmm. it was just the the tone was all fucking wrong it was almost as if half of this 
Like, the one shot was a comedy, and the reverse was a drama. Yeah, a lot of things didn't quite add up properly. And then we get into the part where Bonnie, yet again, um, this time it feels like she has chosen to go see Saladin in the shower, because she's like... Or it's just like a scheduled thing now. Or it's like a scheduled thing. But what was so weird about this moment is she's like, I'm going to go to the shower, and Michelle's like, I'll go with you. And she's like, no, I'm going to go alone. I'm going to be, yep. I'll be fine. Don't worry about, like, like she grabs her stuff and she does, she goes off to the shower like she's resolved and she knows what has to be done. And yep. then once she gets into the shower and she sees Saladin there and he's like, strip, she's like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And I'm like, wait a second. I didn't re- read it as that, actually. I I saw it as uh, as horror and fear of the situation, but I think yes. she was resigned to it almost. Uh, well, not no, resigned, she, but like, she, she, I don't she, think she was surprised by it, was she? Well, let me rephrase that. Okay. Um, because in the one scene she resolved, she felt resolved like she had to do what she was going to go do. Yes. Which I understood. It's when she got to the shower scene, and, and this sounds perhaps callous and heartless and terrible but there was i mean what's what's new that's true um there was a feeling from that i thought where her reaction to what he was doing or what he wanted yeah was surprised of like oh i can't believe this is happening i thought this time we would cuddle (laughs) shit right yeah no i can i can understand that's what i mean like it yeah like her reaction to it was almost as if she forgot what was, gonna what was happen. going to happen. And again, sure. it was uncomfortable. In fact, this is another moment where I was like, so he does his business, he leaves. Yeah. Um, she breaks a mirror, she grabs a piece of mirror, and as she's and, oh my slitting God. her own fucking wrist, her nipples are perfectly framed in the shot. Yeah. Like, her nipples got more attention in that shot than the mirror slicing her, her wrist And open. it might have it just been because they were trying to distract from the bad effects. But that doesn't excuse it. Yeah, I mean, it, but this goes again to that, like, hey, fellas, now's the time. This, now's the we time. We got a real great close-up of nipples here. Check this out. This is the great pause screen to... Which was so uncomfortable. And then yeah. the other thing that was so weird about that scene is, like, the next shot is Colleen finding out what happened running in there and Audrey has found Bonnie and yeah. she has tied just the tiniest little cloth around her wrists and she's perfectly okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. And she was like, she would be dead if I hadn't found her. <laughs> well, I don't I, I don't know if you could have stopped it. I think there was a, a very interesting parallel to this in Naked Cage, actually. Uh-huh. Uh, if, if you remember, there's a scene where a woman actually gets fed a mirror yes do you remember that that scene was horrifying and that was horrifying and that had consequences and i feel like this movie there's there's one consequence in well two consequences in this whole fucking movie and they feel very low stakes in general yes for the most part well and that's the thing where like over and over and over again it's it's like um well, first of all, we're seeing the same scenes over again. Nothing is sure. moving forward. We're we're bouncing from like four different uh, set pieces, and not to say that that shouldn't be, but it's the same fucking thing over the and over again. Is yeah, it's the same story beats where it's like, sure, Helena attacks Bonnie, Colleen stops mm-hmm. it, um, Saladin attacks Bonnie, Colleen can't stop it, Colleen's snotty to everybody and tries yep. to formulate a plan to get out. Um, there was this really weird thing where Saladin has a tobacco pouch that he says is as soft as a woman's breast. It's a leather pouch. At first, I thought that was going to lead to somewhere else, like a fucking Ed Gein thing. Oh, where no. I I don't know, man. He was twisted enough. Well, and he says it like four times. Like, it almost bookends the fucking movie. I don't know why. Well, not only does he say it the first time he meets Colleen in the room yeah. alone, he also says it like... As he rips open women's shirts and touches their breasts uh, yeah, against their like, will. Yeah, it's like, doesn't, doesn't this like, feel like my so tobacco soft. pouch? Yeah, which is so fucking what? weird. I think that whoever wrote this was real proud of that line and thought, mm, yeah, yeah, that's I what fucking, people want to hear. Yeah. Well, at this point, they've decided now that they're going to do the whole breakout thing. Um, and yes. they're going to really start the breakout. And this was actually really weird because I thought, like, 
again, um, sometimes they can just walk out of their cells whenever they want. Yeah. Sometimes they have to bribe the guards. It and all depends all on... Of, there's no consistency. Like, I don't know what the deal is with locking the doors. Yeah, and their cells, there's 40 women in each cell, you know, except yeah. except for Pocky. Pockies? Pos- Poxy. Pockies. Pockies. Pockies? Sure. She has her own cell full of uh, a bunch of different things. Sure. And, yeah. That's because she needs but, to... Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing, too, is some of these cells, we say cells, some of them are traditional, like, sliding bars, and there's, like, 40 women in a room with, like, a bench, like a holding cell. Right. At, like, and cots a, and stuff, yeah. And then some of them are, like, they practically look like they're inside of a cave wall with, like, a big steel door. <laughs> right. Um, and there's, like, 40... Looks like Alcatraz or something like that. Yeah, and it's so weird because the jail cells look differently from scene to scene. Yeah. Um, at this point, actually, one of my favorite moments in the movie happened, because I thought this was actually kind of brilliant. Okay. Um, Helena finds out about the fact that all the women are trying to break out. Yeah. The four women. And I thought, oh, great. Now all their bad decisions are going to come back to bite them in the yeah, ass. There's, there, that, that's the standard thing totally. of, like, bad guy overhearing yeah. the good guy's plans. Uh-oh. And then what ends up happening, though, is Helena it comes up and is like, they're like, what the fuck is she doing here? And she's like, hey, I want to get the fuck out of here too, all right? Like, Yeah, she holds a knife to a guard's throat yeah, for him. like she, she's all of a sudden like their friend. I, I thought that moment was surprising. It was good. Yep. It was really yeah. well written. Although I do feel like it's a little weird that everyone seems super cool that they're like going to now team up with their friend's rapist. Oh, yeah, sure. She's not going to pull yeah. anything on you. We, we don't know her uh, her relation to Saladin or if she has an inter... Well, it looks you know, negative like a, from the whole movie. It did, but it also felt like they hadn't been there long enough sure. to know whether or not who was on whose side, you know? Well, I was waiting for the twist almost the entire movie. Yeah. Like, towards the end of her being like, haha, fooled you, now... Nah, gonna be the second to last boss of this fucking video game. I actually really Im- was impressed that... Uh... Yeah. It didn't turn out that way. Um, I I wanted I thought, to talk first of, uh, okay. bef- before we get to the whole escape plan. The the escape plan wouldn't wouldn't happen without our sad tuberculosis Mary. Oh right, because apparently, <laughs> and this fucking floored me. She's had a key to the cell for like years. Ten years, she says. Ten years. I've had this so for why? Ten years, and I've been why? afraid to escape. What? Yeah. Mary, pass it on. There's nobody else trying to make an escape? Yeah. Like, it's nobody's stubby. been nice to her in 10 years. Apparently not. Look, she could only give that key to a person as she's dying. <laughs> because that was her last act with her last breath was to It has been over. ordained. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was such a weird moment. That was nuts. And this actually helps set the whole plan in place. Of course um, it does. Gives them a... a feeling of hope also she dies the next morning and actually there was a beautiful shot right after she heads to sleep and there's a there's a shot with religious singing over it where it pans up a big uh tower and it fades back into the cell and the girls our girls are all standing around her bed watching her be wheeled away and uh yeah actually bonnie at that moment says something to the effect of i wish i could go with her and that was, really got me. Yes, yes. Like, that killed me. I was like, Jesus Christ, she has given up. She is the only one who's being affected by this whole situation, and everybody is just like, we're the A-team. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's gonna be also fun. the only one who's sexually assaulted. Well, of course. So yes. So I think that adds to that. Well, it gave her character to do, do something, for God's sake. And speaking of the assaults, she decides that part of her plan, like what she has to do in this whole yeah. thing, is she has to go up to Saladin and yep. distract him. Yeah. And apparently another guy. She doesn't know this, but when she goes up, that it's her day The to sex be... trader guy. Yeah, the sex trader guy is going to take her, and mm-hmm. she's going to be branded that day. Um, Yikes. She has the knife. She kills the one dude. Um, she does the hair knife again. Yes, yes. Although hers is longer, so it kind of makes much sense. longer. Makes much more sense. Yeah. Um, and then Colleen sort of breaks in. You know, shit happens. Colleen breaks in. Colleen and Bonnie get Saladin and knock him out. Yep. They run away to leave. Um, oh and Bonnie goes, wait, I need to go back. I forgot something. Um, 
<laughs> and I actually really thought this was fucking a badass revenge. She, this is perfect. She goes, has the knife. She basically wakes Saladin up and she says, hey, mm. some people like soft tobacco pouches. I just want a little coin purse. And then she cuts his fucking balls off. Damn. Which I was like, yeah. yeah. Go you, girl. I actually thought that that tone was what the whole movie should have been. It should have, I mean, there honestly is a differentiation of tone from scene to scene. And I just think that the tragedy of it all needed to be played up more, you know? And the, then the frustration and the badassery think, of the girls. Well, I think, I was going to get into this later, but I, I think now's a good time to talk about it. What's interesting about the tone is that sort of like the whole line about like, you know, some people like soft tobacco pouches. I just want a little coin purse. Yeah. Feels very like Arnold line sure. after he kills a bad guy or like Sal- yeah, yeah, Salone yeah. line, which feels very much like, haha, cool, fun action movie. But this is a movie about a woman who's getting raped over and over mm-hmm. and over again. Sure. And I'm wondering if this is just one of those things that we are taking sensibilities of 2020, 27 sure. years later. Yeah, and yeah. placing the horrific nature of that on... And I'm not saying that in 1993, rape wasn't horrific. What I am saying, though, is I don't think people were as um, understanding of how horrific mm-hmm. it could be. Um, and that, um, especially written and directed by men, that you know the assumption is like, oh, it's something you just sort of get over if you kill your accuser we don't have the understanding of PTSD today. So of course what's weird tonally about this is um, I'm curious how this movie plays in 93. Like if tonally Mm. Mm -hmm. um, a woman can be raped repeatedly in a movie and then have a badass line. And it's like, yeah, she got him. Woohoo. Whereas now I watch it and I think to myself, that's years of therapy. Uh, Years of like the reality is she might still, commit suicide like, right um so I, I guess that's tonally what's so weird about this movie mm-hmm. although there are weird tonal shifts within the movie itself within scenes for god's yes. sake but i'm sort of saying that if it had been sort of more gritty and better shot i think that they there there's so many opportunities that i saw in this that you know again this is a weird subject to even tackle yes and especially with the idea of making it titillating and making it about such forceful, horrific yes. conditions, uh, I don't know. Well, those if, two things can't exist. You know, well, no, at the same time, I mean, they can. Sadly, in some people's psyche. Good point. Good point. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that they are healthy. Yes. Uh, Yes. I- instances of uh, basis of the sexual desire. Right. But I would say that the uh, the fact that these movies exist at all is sort of an indictment on the sensibilities of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Maybe 70s and 80s. The women uh, in prison films? Or... The women in prison films, yeah. yeah. Um, I just think that that's an odd fantasy that socially existed yeah. and was produced for an audience that was clearly going to go out there yeah. and uh and purchase a ticket or purchase a vhs i don't know well they're all exploitation films mm-hmm. very specifically mm-hmm. they're supposed to be exploited to shock to yeah. yes to shock to and i think there is sadly you're right mm-hmm. i think there is supposed to be titillation in the exploitative nature of the yeah. movies i think any subject can be made a movie out of but I think that the sensitivity and the direction that it is shot, not just the, the point in the camera, but uh, the, yes. <laughs> uh, the the direction with which it is shot uh, for through the director and the cinematographer and saying, you know, how are we going to frame this? How are we yes. going to literally and figuratively frame the struggles that these people are going through? You know what it reminds me of in a really interesting way is, um, have you seen uh, Birds of Prey, the... Uh, harley quinn no, movie i haven't yet um okay it's i'll i'll get to it we've I, we've, we've got time oh yeah totally <laughs> we got plenty of time i really enjoyed that movie interesting um, okay um i liked a lot about it um yeah and what i thought was particularly fascinating was the way margot robbie was dressed in that movie was similar yeah. to the way she was dressed in suicide squad okay but the way she was shot 
in the two different movies. Mm -hmm. You could definitely tell one was the male gaze and one was the female gaze. Right. And one was leering over her her breasts and her breasts were center framed. Having her undress and dress in the middle of a army barrack. Yes. No, I know. And, and, but there are scenes in Birds of Prey where she is dressing and undressing, but they are shot in such a way where like her boobs aren't the focal point. Her ass isn't the focal point. And that becomes really interesting in just like, I hate to say this in one, she's treated as an object and then the other yep. she's treated as a person a subject a subject yeah and i think i'm curious like if you even take like the same maybe not the same exact script because there's a lot of problems with the script but like definitely but uh, the storyline if you take the same storyline or even just the same script in the scenes where bonnie is getting assaulted or yeah. like the after effects of her being assaulted Mm-hmm. Um, I'm imagining the way a female shoots that is she puts her shirt back on or she puts a sure. towel around her body or, or she, covered or, or something. she immediately yeah. covers up before yeah. she vomits or whatever. Or, or you shoot over the wall of, uh, of the shower rather than straight fucking on. Or you shoot from behind. So like yeah, you see the yes, back exactly. of her head and her the vomiting. vulnerability. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or you just don't frame her nipples in a scene yeah. where she's Good slitting Lord. her wrists. Um, anyways, back to Irresponsible. The st- hey, back to the story. Back to the story. Yeah. The um, fun, fun story of escaping a prison. Yes. Yay. Uh, Helena turns into a... Long, long, long story short, Helena turns into a badass. She yep. actually kills a guard. Um, yeah. They tie a bunch of them up. Yes. So Helena, Helena's lackey, Audrey, and Michelle escape out the front door. Um, Colleen and Bonnie get caught in Saladin's room. Because she had to get that coin purse. Because she had to get that coin purse. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's this really weird fucking moment where they somehow get out of a skylight. Like, that fr- that shot was shot weird. I don't know what that was. That was so weird. And also, are you telling me that there were no uh, open windows? You could clearly see windows yes. on the side of the wall. Wo- I was like, wait, climb down. Yeah. Why do you think that the roof is a better option? Yeah, that was really weird. And I also think, too, like... A, like Colleen jumped up yeah. and grabbed the, like, and I don't know how she grabbed the sli- skylight, but then she, mm-hmm. like, pulls Bonnie, like, one-handed past her like, while Bonnie with her legs up. I didn't understand that either. I didn't understand the, the trajectory of that. But anyways, yeah. that happens. They get outside. And, and then this is my favorite part, actually. This is the most campy, if there can be a most campy moment. They shatter the window on the roof to get out. I actually and, liked I laughed. And there is a roof guard. There's yes. a guy sitting in a roof guard post or something. Uh-huh. And when that shatters, he like, <laughs> he was sleeping. And he goes back. Thank God he likes sleep. Yep. Thank God he wants to Thank go back to God. his nap. Well, I like sleep too, so let's not hold oh, that me too. against him. Really. No, not at all. Let's, let's, um... But they're running along the roof, and they see him, and they're like, well, we got to use these, uh, I don't know what they were, but they they were almost trenches within the roof to get closer to him. Yeah. Colleen and Bonnie are right there. Uh, Colleen stole, oh, we completely skipped over Pocky's the red of the prison, they actually stole some sleeping pills and some money and some a, a gun yeah. from her at one point. Also put her to sleep with like a mouthful of sleeping pills. She's going to die. She she was clearly dead well, a, after the overdose of sleeping pills, right? Yeah, yeah. Although that was weird too, timing-wise. They slipped her some sleeping pills. And then, like, seven hours later, they're still in the prison. But that's neither here nor there. Right. Whatever. Um, but what so ends up they, happening? They have, they have a gun. Uh, Colleen has not used the gun. She's been in a lot of bad scrapes at, to that point. And she mm-hmm. finally says, you know what? This is the last guy we have to get past. Here's the gun, Bonnie. I'm going to go take down the guard. You back me up. She knocks the guard out and then tries to use an empty gas can to fucking knock him out. And he overpowers her and Bonnie has to shoot the guard. What I didn't understand was they were able to run up to the guard and like the guard didn't budge until Colleen grabbed him and pulled him away. 
knocked his gun off of his lap. Directly behind the guard is the staircase. I don't mm-hmm. understand why they didn't just sneak past the sleeping Try to guard. make a run for it. Try to. Yeah. You know? But anyways, at this point, we're at the end of the movie, basically. Finally. Um, they run downstairs. Another guard shows up. That guard is about to kill Bonnie and Colleen. And then Helena hops out of the van that they're all hiding in and goes... I will take care of this. Helena, Don't you worry, ladies. Helena goes and stops the guard. She gets killed. Um, Colleen and Bonnie get a in the A hero's van. death. A hero's death, which is, again, I want to point out, she did sexually assault Bonnie. And we're supposed yeah. to be cheering for her in this moment. That's a whole right. story. Well, it's an anti-hero's death, maybe, yes. let's say. And then they just drive out of Turkey back into Greece, and then they start singing Oh, Susanna. S- I was livid. I was absolutely goddamn livid and the movie because ends. they started singing it as if they had just had a bad night out on hollywood boulevard yeah. like they've got some bad molly from somebody and they were like man what a crazy night let's get back in the van and drive home was that your Boy, sammy I davis am... jr man, man baby this is cra- this was a wild kooky night baby Lol Susanna. I believe Susanna. Dean and Martin they're, passed they're, her around at a party in 1947. And, Jesus Christ. And they're legitimately laughing. There's no weight to it. Yeah. There's absolutely a, a frustrating amount of, of, like, yes. Have they been in be prison happy. a year? Have they been in right? prison a week? Who knows? I really don't know. There was no time passage whatsoever. I mean, some of the girls were working in the kitchen at one point. Also, how too, is this fucking happening? I want to point out that they escape prison in the same van that they were arrested in. Yeah. Which was a rental van. So, number one, I want to point out the fact that rather than that van being impounded at like some sort of police station, it was, it was handily imp- it just, was just in the in fucking the parking lot. And number yep. two, what do you think their rental bill is going to be? When they bring that van Woo! back to the rental yeah. company. They do not give a discount for yeah. kidnapping I, I don't think people. so. so uh, I want to the... know one thing before we get to the credit song. I want to know, did Bonnie keep the coin purse? Oh, yeah. She had it in her pocket at the end. You think so? Yeah. No? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm I would have sure. liked to see a bloody pocket. Uh, I think her she was covered in blood as she was running out of the prison. Well, yeah, but and, that and could the, have happened. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Good point. Good point. And, and, and so then, so then the fucking credits roll. And oh, Susanna plays. That's all. It was not the right choice. No, I not will for this tell movie. anybody who was fucking involved in that decision was absolutely wrong for the fucking tone of this movie even the tone that they gave it yeah it didn't make sense for the movie it was like it it felt like it was the end like um i know this does sound weird but like if that song played at the end of deliverance where it actually (laughs) takes place in the american south yes it would still be a weird choice but at least i would get it it would make a little bit more sense it'd be like oh this is irony yeah rather than thinking oh this is a happy ending everybody these girls got out that all four of them plus the lackey they're fine they're great they're fine their life is gonna be fine not to mention the fact that there is at least by my estimate 150 yeah. to 200 other women who were just locked in this prison getting yeah. beaten assaulted yeah because there was like a minimal prison riot near the end but it was just them like knocking on the bars you know yeah, like, well, the, the, ah, the, the I'm guards so angry. the guards were able to stop everything oh of course well and not and to say that these girls are going to go back and say hey guess what this fucking thing happened and anything is going to well, they, occur they because can't of it. Do anything like no. What are the, what's the what are the Americans or the Greeks going to do? Go in sure. Turkey at that point. Exactly, and this again speaks to the the fucking tone deafness of this director and the whoever was fucking creating this movie to say that this is not an Empire Strikes Back ending, saying we got the fuck out of there, but we are broken. Yes. Like, this is not a good ending. This is not... Luke has fucking lost his hand. Han is in carbonite. This is not happy. These these girls have been sexually assaulted and shit. This is not fucking funny. It's not. It's not. Stop laughing, Nick. It is... Well, the part that's funny is that you have just... Is my comparison? Yes. 
Oh, absolutely. That yes. is definitely funny. As it long is, as you're only laughing at that. It is the most ridiculous comparison I've ever you're heard welcome. in my entire life. You're I'm... fucking welcome. <laughs> so I guess this we have to then ask the question, what can we steal from this movie? What is canon? Uh, I don't want to. All right, um, I'll go. <laughs> no, um, what I would steal, there's a couple of things. That shot of the tower after Mary dies, that, that transition is pretty standard. Uh, but I really, I, I do think that it's moving. Yeah. You know, there's 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 something, st- like, just typical for me. And I was like, oh, that's nice. That's that's something that I expect out of a movie, rather mm-hmm. than being all bizarre. Uh, Jesus, what, what else? Well, I mean, boobs and guns and shit. I mean, well, that's... Well, okay, that's so that's canon. Canon. It's, it's that's very, absolutely it's, canon. I'm not going to steal it, but uh, yeah. that is definitely canon. Well, I also think canon, too, the movie starts deep in media res. Like, we, oh, of course. Like, the act one break is nine minutes into the movie when they're taken into the prison. And we have no reason to... Ca- like, this, this goes back to that whole, like, in certain canon films, why do we care mm-hmm. about these characters? Well, there are leads. Yeah. Right, but why do we oh, care cool. about that? Oh, thank you. But there are leads. Oh, okay, cool. They're on screen, like, 80% of the time. Yeah. That's why. Great, but why... Wh- how do they know each other? What do they study in school? How old are they? You actually need some character development? You wanted to see them maybe in Greece for a couple of minutes? Yeah. Uh, that would have been great. Spending time uh, researching things, different stuff like yes. that? No. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, we, think- well, we got... We got two lines. We got one line that was Colleen's, and she said, oh, my dad uh, liked guns, and that's why I'm uh, capable of carrying a gun. I don't remember that at all. Are you kidding me? Like, later on, once, right when they get the gun, she was like, oh, yeah, my dad took me out shooting or some bullshit like that. that. Wow. I was like, Jesus Christ, how shoehorned could you get? Um, The things that I would steal from this movie, because that's that's the canon stuff. The things that I would steal from this movie is the fact that when Audrey grabs the knife, I thought that was a really good moment. Um, Yeah. I thought the reversal of Helena being a friend and then not double-crossing them was kind of cool. Yeah, that was refreshing. Yeah. And I thought... Having having an anti-twist. Well, I think what it does is it uses what we assume is going to happen against us. Yes. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, it takes the cliche, mm-hmm. and it uses the form of the cliche, but then it's like, haha, but we're not doing the cliche. Yeah. Um, and Good, I also thought Bonnie's um, revenge line, as much as it didn't fit the movie, was pretty badass. Mm-hmm. It was great. Yeah. No, it so. was, I mean, they clearly had to set it up with four or five times of Saladin talking about his well, goddamn tobacco pouch, which he only smoked once. Yes. He only fucking no, smoked twice, once. Twice. Did he? Twice? I twice. Because the second Whatever. time was with the uh, the slave trader guy. Oh, you know what? What else was typical canon was, do you remember in, what was it? I, I feel like it was X-Ray, where the woman has dropped something and she's trying to hide from the killer. Yes. And she's doing a real bad job of it. Of hiding? Well, yes. Th- that yeah, happened this, to us too. This happened in this as well, where she dropped something. That scene alone was one of the most frustrating things because she is in the office. She has the keys to the van and the fucking passports. She has access to all of their passports. Yes, and and she just leaves them. And loses every single one, including her earrings. She is bad at everything. Yeah. She is the worst. And I know, I understand that, well, maybe he's going to look at the fucking file and see them, and he he can't see that she's been in there, and she doesn't have an exact plan to get out. But it's really strange to me that she has access to all of those things. And then just and, leaves them. And then leaves every single one of them. Yeah. yeah, that was a weird... And even there's there's a point where she pockets her earring later on. It's not, like, focused on or anything, but it's like, I finally got my earring back. Thank goodness. Yes, well, that's... Yeah, that's a whole... Yeah. So I'm assuming you're not going to recommend this movie. I would say there are, weirdly enough, better prison movies. Yes, totally. I women, mean, women in prison Watch movies. The Naked Cage. Yeah, I actually, like, still that's problematic, but I was more with 
the character because we started with the issues outside of the prison rather than that being the entirety of the whole thing. Totally. And this and this hit a lot of those standards, you know, of yeah. the big bad, the warden, the shower scenes. The, I mean, it's kind of limited what you can do in a fucking prison movie. And I think this movie was made in the very deep throes of Canon's demise. Like, this is Canon's yeah. death now, like this movie at this point. Yeah, it so. was like, wait, 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 What what's made us money in the past? And how quickly can we make one? Yeah, let's. that's easy enough. So... All right. Yeah. Well, what about what about you? Would you re- recommend this? Oh, I I think my recommendation is if you want to watch a canon women in prison yeah. movie, watch The Naked Cage. Like, agreed. This is not. I'll put it this way: this is not the worst movie I've ever seen. No. Um, but it's also not exactly fun. It isn't. Um, in its horribleness, if you are yeah. a real lover of women in prison movies and yeah. you've seen them all, I guess this is worth a watch. Sure. But at the end of the you know? day, yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, though, it's not what I would call, like, it's like a later entry. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, where where they, they'd lost the sheen. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. All right, Nick, what is going to be on the next time? The next time, AJ, we are going to visit a canon staple. Oh? Yes, I mean not the movie, but the canon actor staple. Okay, this is the premiere mm-hmm. of the canon stable, which is different than a staple. Yes, of course. Do you want to take a guess on who our actor is? Uh, one of the Chucks. No. Oh. Um. If it's not the Chucks, yeah. it's got to be the dude. The Duder. The Dudikoff. Michael Dudikoff. Oh uh, man, starring in 1992's Rescue Me. Oh, wow. I don't know if you know, he had the part before Dennis Leary did. Oh, wow. So this is going to be a prequel to the firefighting series. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I mean, that's my guess. I would assume so. I don't know if that's actually what it's about. What else could it be about? You know what? (laughs) What else could a movie called Rescue Me be about? That's very specific. So at the time of this recording, it is available on Amazon Prime for free. Okay, great. So check it out. We, you know, are locked down and... I'm assuming that you are also locked down and indeed you have nothing to do but watch movies. Exactly. So Get on it. You might as well. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Rescue me next week. Oh, I'll rescue you today if you'd like. That would be nice. Yeah, if you yeah. if you have some time. I'll see if it fits in my schedule. <laughs> uh, nope, sorry. Darn it. Help. I don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> All right, that sounds fun. And uh Nick where can we follow you? Give me give me all the deets. All right. Uh, you can always follow me on Twitter at Nicholas C. Pappas. And then NicholasCPappas.com, the website that, unlike Space Jam's website, <laughs> will forever be under construction. Because that thing is... Still running. Yeah. This, it's prime and it's, Still it's running. complete and everything. Uh, you can follow me at the AJ Hamilton, and I have TheAJHamilton.com locked down with my stuff and then you can follow us at creating canon that's c-a-n-n-o-n email us at creating canon at gmail.com and as we always say nicholas what do we say we say good night and and good good canon canon. perfect cool You look gorgeous. Rolled gold pretzel. (laughs) 20 minutes of fucking sadness talk. Fuck yeah. (laughs) Sadness talk. What your definition of facial is. (laughs) We are all over the map today. I don't care. I don't have anything else to do. (laughs) Life's fun. Isn't it? Mine? No. Oh yeah. Yo, you single boo? Spoiler mm. alert, sorry, uh, for this... Uh, Say that again, because I think you said spoiler a fart. I'm a fucking professional. I know that. Hey, computer, hey, computer play, play Smash, Smash Mouth. Mouth. Son of a bitch. Blackberry. Blackberry. Oh, God, flashlight, why? Here oh. we come! We've gone crazy. Obviously. Imagine all the celebrities... It's easy if you've tried, but I haven't tried, nor have I watched that video. I don't care to. What are you doing? What are you doing to the thing? AJ, are you drunk? Yes. This is Smash Mouth from Spotify. Yes! I win!